What's up guys, today we're going to talk about Adobe Photoshop. So, you've downloaded Adobe Photoshop and you want to become an image editor and you don't know the basics of it and just can't figure out how to use it. Then, this video is for you. Today, we are going to uh, learn a few things about Photoshop and I'll cover uh, all the topics all the basic topics you have to learn to uh, be able to edit images in Photoshop and uh, by the end of this video you will learn how to edit images and uh, save it to your computer so let's start okay we'll start by opening Adobe Photoshop okay um, as you can see my version of Adobe Photoshop is a CS 5.1 but if you have any older or newer versions the basics are just same so you can follow this video okay now we are in Photoshop and I encourage you to uh, pause this video now and give a look at it at your workspace and uh, look look how the tools and all are arranged and what um, try to guess what their functions are okay so if you are not interested just let's uh, let's get going um, okay so the first thing I want you to observe is the menu bar up top here this menu bar and uh, they are uh, this is very important uh, as it contains all the advanced and basic functions of this Photoshop, and there are there are some important uh, menus here, and they are file, edit, layer, 3D, view, window. So these are the important ones you have to learn basically, and. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll open these and see what they are containing. Okay, so file contains all the open, um, new, and all that basic stuff, and layer contains all the settings layer layer settings. Edit contains all the um, all the general settings um, and uh, preferences. Okay. So uh, we'll go on, and this contains this 3D menu contains um, all the tools related to 3D and the window. Window is very important. Uh, just close this. Um, as you can see uh, on my right side here, we have a lot of uh, uh, windows open here. So now if I click here more windows open and if I click this arrow here it will close and basically what is this stuff um, yeah I'll explain it this to you um, so first of all if you don't have any of these um, you can toggle this easily by going into window and just checking the boxes okay so don't worry if anything is not there here then you can just go to window and toggle it okay now uh, let's look at the tools here okay so these are your basic tools I encourage you to give a look at this toolbar here and uh, this thing here is called move tool as you can see this is marquee tool uh, from which you can select uh, um, uh, maybe you can see a small arrow here and uh, what that arrow means is if you right click on this image you will get uh, the different options of that tool as you can see uh, I've selected the marquee tool and it's giving me options of rectangular marquee tool elliptical marquee tool and all this stuff okay so pretty much all of them have uh, uh, arrows uh, except move and magnify and uh, 
uh, you can use this little arrow to make it double in size as, as we have in Microsoft Paint but I'll leave it like that because I like it like that and uh, let's let's see what all tools we have here first uh, this is move tool this is marquee tool this is called lasso tool this helps in selecting an image uh, this is crop tool with which you can crop photos and if you don't know what is crop then a uh, crop is basically just uh, cutting the unwanted part of an image and making it neat and uh, this is eyedropper tool uh, with which you can um, maybe select color this is pot healing brush and if you don't know what that is um, I'll use this uh, all these tools later in this video okay so this is paint tool um, paint brush tool this is um, this is clone stamp tool this is history brush this is a uh, normal eraser, eraser tool this is a gradient tool if you don't know what that is I'll cover all the topics um, later in this video okay um, this is blur tool um, burn this is burn uh, no this is dodge tool this is pen tool this is text tool and this is path selection tool um, and this is rectangular tool this is this is 3d object tool this is camera rotate tool this is hand tool and this is zoom in tool and this is your background and foreground colors and if you don't know what is foreground a foreground is an image coming over your background means an image over an image is called a uh, foreground okay so um we have uh, uh, just analyzed our workspace and uh, you can also change your workspace uh, by the type you're working on um my workspace is essentials now and if you if i click design it will give me all the tools related to design and if i click painting it will give me all the tool necessary for painting and uh, if i click the little arrow you'll get all the workspaces and uh, for example if i click 3d it will give me all the uh, 3d related tools okay now for now we'll just be in essentials okay so um, we have just analyzed our workspace uh, let's edit something okay so how do you open an image in uh, Photoshop okay so that's very simple file open okay once more file open and if you don't like to do it keyboard shortcut is control O okay now you have uh, opened the browse menu and uh, I'll just select some images let me select this okay so this is our image okay so you would ask me why am I seeing these blue lines that's because this is the indicate indication line for a ruler we'll get to it later in this video okay so I encourage you to have a look at our layers tab here um, our layer tab uh, is having one layer and that is background which is this this is background as you can see as per the thumbnail is indicating and uh, down here you have some tools these are this is a new layer tool this is group tool uh, what's that what is group tool okay so if you have a bunch of layers and uh, you want to organize them a little bit then you can group them into a folder and you can organize your work if you're doing a large business work so that's group tool and uh, this is fill tool okay so 
that's just basic and uh, okay so let's what what do we do with this okay so you would ask me why are you seeing this 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 sign here okay because our layer here is logged you can see here logged because we can't change it so so it's not allowing us to change it um, but we can of course see it came up with an error could not complete your request because the layer is logged okay so how do we unlock it okay what do you want to do is just go here and double click it and name your first layer I'll name it as a uh, uh, test okay so you can you have a different controls here color mode mode is just uh, if I select dissolve then so you have made a new layer called test and this is your background layer as you can say, see it's now allowing me to do anything with my image because we have unlocked it and okay so the first thing the first thing I would show is how to get an image over an image that is background and foreground how to get a foreground image on the background uh, for for just an example we'll use this as a background and uh, this as our foreground so we'll just open it and where's my where's my background you will see uh, you don't worry your background is still there uh, you can see these tabs here so this is our foreground image and this is our background image so don't confuse don't worry if your background image is just gone it will will be there unless and until you removed it okay so what we are gonna do is okay as you can see this this image is transparent transparent uh, what do you mean by transparent okay when I move this image at the background you'll see checkered boxes and that means my image is transparent so uh, after these edges I'll um, if you bring it in a photo viewer what does that mean what does those checkered box mean um, uh, for instance if you bring uh, this image into a uh, image viewer it will not show anything after this this edge and that's called transparency um, so uh, my image is already transparent so what I'm gonna do is select my move tool and just drag this to the upper tab here and bring this in like that my foreground image came over my background image just we have made it okay so as you can see it has created uh, created one more layer called layer one okay so we are now moving to more advanced editing okay so uh, maybe you have to place this here so you can just move it like this like this okay so what if you want to rotate it like this or resize it uh, for that what you want to do is just go to edit and go to transform now go to transform and select scale okay so now you can resize it as you wish you can create a mirror image or or you can also do it this way so uh, the keyboard shortcut for this is control T now if you move it to the corner you can see this curved arrow here now by clicking and moving this like that you can rotate your images uh, like this you can place it anywhere and after finishing your trans transformation just hit enter and it will make it appear there okay so one more important feature you have to know is uh, if you uh, 
right click this and go to blending options you'll see all this all these things okay so the alternate way to do this is just double click here uh, what mistake uh, all the people do is they double click this this uh, name so it changes into rename or they double click this thumbnail so what you have to do is just double click on this empty space to get blending options now you have a lot of two a uh, lot of uh, effects here you have drop shadow inner shadow outer glow inner glow bevel and emboss uh, contour texture satin color overlay gradient overlay pattern overlay stroke and all this and what does all this mean okay uh, we'll just figure this out now uh, drop shadow uh, if you go to drop shadow the box will be ticked now I'll just move it so that you can see the effect being applied and now we have a lot of tools here now if I increase the distance you can see it's increasing the distance of the drop shadow here now if I spread it like that it will spread that up and size it will make it bigger and bigger so that was drop shadow and how do I change the color of my drop shadow and just click this and you can change whatever color you like okay so let's move on to inner shadow okay so inner shadow is this it's making inner shadow uh, that uh, looks very realistic and distance choke choke size okay so the thing that matters here is distance and size if you have to apply choke it just does not nothing uh, much but uh, distance matters distance matters here and size the spreads and give a cool kind of look to your image okay okay so now let's move on to inner glow inner glow is a uh, glow inside now what you have to do what matters here is size so if you increase the size the glow will increase and uh, outer glow is just glow outside the image this okay so that's just the basic stuff glows bevel and emboss uh, if you increase the size and distance of this see we have a cool effect so I recommend you to pause this video and uh, just play with the tools and uh, don't worry if something gone bad S uh, but don't worry if you have messed up something you can always open a new project for a test and I recommend you to play with it for some time and you'll get it automatically so uh, we have a lot of options here satins color overlay gradient overlay pattern overlay and the most important here is color overlay color can do everything right so it is defaultly set to uh, red uh, but will change to light blue maybe yeah okay so when you trim down the opacity you will see this so that is also a pretty good effect and if you want a gradient gradient what's gradient uh, so this is called as a gradient um, from dark to light from black to white or uh, if you can if you can double click this gradient icon here uh, you'll get this now click this you can choose your custom color for a gradient and white side if you click this you can choose your custom color as uh, maybe black yeah so 
so that's just basically a gradient from going to a dark color to a light color and we'll just uncheck this because we don't want that on our logo okay so so that was blending options and uh, I just forgot what are these blue lines okay so this just gives you some indic uh, some uh, this just give you ruler indication so for example I'll go to view and uh, turn on rulers now what I do is just drag this thing here if I want to make something so this blue line appears helping me to make it as straight as possible so this is a lot helpful if you're making logos like me oh uh, so that's pretty much uh, these blue lines just they have their work okay so let's move on to the tools um, this is lasso, lasso tool and I'll just uh, mention some important tools here and this is lasso tool if uh, there are many lasso tools here this just helps in selecting your uh, particular image uh, for example I I have to select um, this logo here so what I do is just click here and uh, this is uh, and select this so now this image is selected here and I can do whatever I want so uh, we have a lot of uh, lasso tools uh, for example we have poly polygonal lasso tool that enables you to just draw and select polygonally like this like this and when this this thing appears it means you have completed your selection now you can do whatever with it okay so one more important lasso tool is magnetic lasso tool uh, what you have to do in this is I'll just move this a little bit okay what you have to do in this is uh, just follow without clicking the logo and it will automatically magnetically select your image so I feel this is helpful in creating logos or if uh, this is very accurate sometimes but but I don't use it frequently I use the poly polygonal lasso tool very much <coughs> and use the pen tool okay now let's move on to this tool spot healing healing brush tool and uh, the function of and the function <coughs> the function of this the function of this is uh, for instance uh, let me scribble something here so I want to repair this so what I'll use is just uh, just repair this image so I want this thing to be white so what I do is uh, press press alt and define the source point now I'll just I can just heal this image here it'll take a lot of time so this is good for healing pimples and uh, uh, acne stuff on your face okay so this is the normal gradient too not like we saw in the blending options uh, with this you can just make a line like this and it will draw you a gradient make you a gradient and uh, uh, okay let's turn this gradient off okay so this is blur tool this will basically just blur your image this is dodge tool dodge by the way uh, you can go here drop down arrow and just increase the size of your brush you're working on and just this will burn the image I like that and uh, basically uh, this is also burn to just burn your image 
Okay, so this is pen tool. This is another way of selecting an image. If I want to select this, I just create some points. This. Okay, so I have a selection here. Make selection and this is selected. Okay. And what if I have to select? Um, uh, let me take this circle uh, circle uh, what if I have to select round surfaces like this so what you're gonna do is make a point and just drag it like this to make a circle like this uh, okay and select this thing and make point here and select this thing so that's pretty easy if you play with it and uh, that's pretty easy if you play with it and you can work on it it's very easy just a basic software and uh, this is horizontal type 2 what you have to do is just you can type something on it and uh, you can always uh, hit control T to transform the uh, thing you're working on and as soon as you use type 2 your character box comes up and character box control your front font color and all that uh, writing stuff and paragraph box controls your alignments and stuff and so this is just basically the character box you can open it anytime this is the paragraph box okay so if you want to zoom in an image you can just select this and zoom this in okay so now you have edited your image and you want to save it to something so what you want to do is just file and go and save it or else you can use just control s and if you click dr drop down menu you can see all the formats of the file uh, all these things um, I'll probably say in G JPEG and save so that's how simple it is and if you want to save your project and do it on a, another day just use save as and uh, name your project here something and save it okay so now you can see my uh, project is saved here and uh, maybe my picture is also saved here uh, yeah maybe it saved it in this directory okay so, so we c you can always open it like that and uh, yeah so that's open now okay so So that is pretty much it and uh, the basics of Photoshop with which you can edit images easily and it's just a basic it's just a basic software uh, and uh, so I maybe I've pretty much covered um, some of the topics in Photoshop uh, basics of Photoshop now you have you have to get on work and you have to play with it for some time to master in the skills of image editing and uh, yeah that's pretty much it so sorry for the bad mic quality um, and uh, um, like if you like this video comment uh, subscribe and uh, comment what uh, what feature do you like in photoshop and how will you use it to edit your images and uh, comment how was this video and what video of basic tutorial do you want next and uh, be sure to subscribe because uh, i'll get you all the good stuff like this on my channel be sure to check out my channel and uh, I'll just insert a link 
of keyboard shortcuts for Photoshop down in the description. So go check it out. Keyboard shortcuts helps uh, help lot in saving our time. So go check that out compulsorily. And uh, please make sure to subscribe, like, and comment. And yeah, so I'll see you later.